Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku. And today we are solving Nesting Birds by Philip Newman. So this is actually three Sudoku in one. So we have a five by five kind of perched on top of a seven by seven, which is perched on top of a nine by nine. And in each of these, we're using the digits one through N. So we're using one through five and the five by five, which is right here. We're using one through seven here and we're using one through nine here. So we're gonna be adding two additional digits at each step. The five by five doesn't have regions at all. It is just what is called a Latin square. So we're only worrying about rows and columns. We're putting the digits one through five, once each in each row and each column. The seven by seven is irregular, meaning we're putting the digits one through seven, once each in each row, each column, and then each outlined irregular region. And we're focusing on, in this case, the regions that have kind of heavy outlines, not dotted outlines. The dotted outlines are just to show where the overlap with the other grids are. And then finally, in the nine by nine, we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and then each outlined three by three region. In this case, the dotted lines do show the borders of the regions. They're all three by three squares. In the top grid, we have thermometers. And along a thermometer, the digits have to increase from the round bulb to the tip. And then in the middle, we have Kropke pairs. Digits that are separated by a black dot have to be in a one to two ratio. In other words, one of them has to be twice as big as the other. And digits that are separated by a white dot have to have a difference of exactly one. And finally, the bottom grid is just a classic. It's just standard Sudoku rules. We're just placing the digits so that they don't repeat. So I'm going to start by pencil marking these thermos. These thermos are one shorter than the maximum. So I'm going to pencil mark, mark each cell with two possibilities. And then this is two shorter than the maximum. So that's one, two, or three. That's two, three, or four. That's three, four, or five. And what that gives us is a one, two, three triple here, meaning that these are four and five. And a two, three, four triple here, meaning that these are one and five, but this is a four or five pair. That gives us our one. So that one resolves this whole thermo. And now if we look over here, we're gonna have a one, two pair right there. The five also is gonna resolve this to a four. And that gives us all of that. The one resolves the one, two pair. And then these are going to be one and four. That'll be a three. I need a one and five in this column, a three in this column, and a two and a five here. So that's how we solve the top bird in our Tudakin. So now we need to add in the digits six and seven. We can't put seven on a black dot because there is no digit that is in a one to two ratio with seven. So that'll be a six and the six has to go with a three. Now in this region, we have four more digits to go. We have one, two, four, and seven. Seven again, can't be on a black dot. And so this pair has to be either one and two or two and four. Either way, it has a two, but there's already a two up here. So the two on that pair has to go right there. Now we're gonna look at some of the irregular regions. This six and three have to appear somewhere in this L-shaped region, but they can't appear in the rightmost columns. So they have to go there. So that's a three, six pair. Three and four have to appear somewhere in this column, but they can't go anywhere in this region because they've already been used. So that's going to be a three, four pair. And then the three and six resolves that. Two and five have to go somewhere in here. We'll look at two first. Two is blocked off of these cells. So one of these guys is going to be a two. And then five is going to have to be down here somewhere. And actually, we can look at the central column to do a little bit more work with that. These cells have to all contain digits that could be in a one to two ratio with each other. And because we've already used the one, that means we're left with two and four or three and six. So these four cells are going to contain two, three, four, and six. That makes these a five, seven pair. And that means we can actually place our two because the two can no longer go in those cells. So whatever we put here has to be consecutive with a five or a seven. So it's not going to be two or three. That makes this two or three. And this is not going to be a two. That's not going to be a three. This can't be a six because it has to be consecutive with two or three. And that leaves us with this either being two or six. And we're going to get a little further with that later on. Um, in fact, we will right now because the two is in the same region as this. So that's going to be a six, three, two, four. Four is consecutive with five. And then that's going to be a seven. These two digits are now a one and a five. 
We can't have a 7 anywhere in this column now because of this 7, except for right here, so that'll be a 7. And in this region, we still need 1, 5, 6, and 7. We can't have a 1 there because there is a 1, 4 pair, so there's got to be a 1 in one of those cells. In this column, we still need a 1, 2, and 6 because those already appear in this region. They can't go in those cells. So these guys are going to be 1, 2, and 6. This can't be a 2 or a 6 because those already appear here. So that's going to be a 1, making this a 5. And then the 5 has to go there in the region. That's the only remaining place for it. 5 is consecutive with 6, and so that is our 2. So now 4 can only go there to go into that region. These can't be 5 or 7 because they now appear in the column, so that can't be 6. And these guys resolve. Here we need a 1, 3, and 4. That's not a 3, that's not a 4. Oh, the 5 already resolves this 5 and 7. Here we need 3, 5, and 7. And because there's a 3 and 7 in this row, that's a 5, 7, and 3. And that's not a 3, so we can place our 3. We need a 1 and 2 in this row. We need either a 1 or a 4 here. We need a 1 there. And then that makes this a 2, which resolves the 1 and 2. These will be 5 and 6 to finish off that region. And I think we get the rest from Classic Sudoku at this point. Yep. Now let's look at this Classic. So we need to finish off this row with an 8 and a 9. And there's already an 8 in column 1, so that'll be my 9. And that will be an 8. Now the only position for 3 in this region because there's a 3 here and there's a 3 here, is going to be right there. That leaves this is the only position for 4, this is the only position for 7, and the last digit is a 9. Now we need to place 5, 6, and 8 in this row, but there are 6s in these columns already, so 6 has to go there, and then these are going to be 5 or 8. This needs to be 5, 7, or 8 according to the region, but it already sees a 7 and 8 in its column, so it's a 5. That resolves the 5, 8 pair and finishes this region. Here we're going to need a 6, 8, and 9, and we have two 6s there, so the 6 goes in the middle. If we look at our 4s here, and right here, the 4 in region 4 is going to go there. And if we look at our 6s here, the 6 in region 6 is going to go there somewhere. We can also look at 7s at this point. We have 7s looking into region 6 that place a 7 right here, and that places a 7 right here in this region. This is now the only position for 7 in region 7, and this is going to be our last 7 to finish off the grid. Okay. Now we need an 8 in this region, and it has to go there or there. So these are from 1, 2, or 4, and one of them is definitely going to be a 4. These are from 1, 2, and 3 to finish the column. These are from 1, 3, and 5, and 5 can't be in these cells, so that's a 5. These are 1 and 3, that makes this a 2. And then I need 8 and 9 in these two remaining cells. These are going to be 2, 4, and 6. These are going to be 2, 8, and 9. That's not a 9, that's not a 9, so this is going to be my 9. In this column, I still need 2, 3, 4, and 8, and that can't be 3 or 4, so that's a 2 or 8. So that gives me a 2, 8 pair here. And then these three cells are going to contain 1, 3, and 9. The 3 can't go in column 6, so it goes right there. And that's a 1, 9 pair, making this an 8 and making this a 9. Now these are going to be 1 and 8, 3 and 1, 4 and 3. Eliminate 4 there, so that's a 4. Eliminate 4 from those cells, so that's now a 4. These are going to be 2 and 5, 2 and 6 and 2. My last two digits in this row will be 1 and 3. My last digit in this row will be a 5, and my last two digits in this row will be 6 and 9. That 6 resolves this 6. And up here I now get a 2, which resolves the 2 and 8. That's a 1 and 9, an 8, and my last digit is a 1. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's nesting birds. Hope you guys got a kick out of that one. I enjoyed that. It was a little bit quirky. That was a fun puzzle for me. Um, if you want to try it yourself, the link is in the description of this video. And I will see you again in three days.